Well, we are at Anchor, and anchors are also a source of controversy on yachts. The main cause seems to be that your anchor's never big enough, or it's the wrong type, or something like that. Your chain's not heavy enough, or you shouldn't be using chain, you should be using rope, blah, blah, blah. And on it goes, non-stop. Anchor wars are a thing of internet forums. And we've got our anchor down, we've got our chain down, and the rest of it. But the boat is really being held to that anchor by our snubber. And our snubber is on a piece of line, which is probably less thick than my finger. I don't know what the breaking strain of snubber line is, but I could have a 100 kilogram anchor down there on 20 millimetre chain, and I'll still get this little tiny snubber anchor. Um, so it just makes me wonder about the flame wars and things like that. <laughs> It doesn't really matter whether we've got a 100 kilogram anchor down there or a 16 kilogram anchor down there. At the end of the day, what really matters is what's holding us to the anchor while we swing around wildly in the wind is a small nylon rope. <laughs> and you can't make it too big because if you do, it doesn't fit through the hook. And if you make the hook too big, it doesn't fit through the chain. <laughs> so there are limits. So the next time somebody's having a go at me for not having a big enough anchor, I think I just might ask them what size their snubber is and see what they say to that. Well, you've just caught us in passage planning and um, we're just looking at the various places and deciding where we're going to go next. <sighs> well, it's our uh, second full day here in the Secret Anchorage. We arrived at 10 o'clock at night. Then we had yesterday where we got blew around like two little corks. Um, we were very glad that we were here. <laughs> we were, weren't um, we? You know, because it's so sheltered and everything. And um, It's still gusty in here, though. We did still see gusts up over 30 knots in here. Yeah. Um, but because you are in a good place for this um, anchorage, the sea state was... No, you know, mild, slight, and um, the sea state was slight, smooth, slight, practically smooth in here. Yeah, so uh, so that 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 was good. Uh, but sadly for us, um, another boat has turned up in the secret anchorage, and they've parked just behind us, and we're not quite too sure how they got here. I mean, it's not like we advertise. It's not like we go around putting the coordinates of the place <laughs> on the bottom of the screen. So I I don't know where they've come from, but uh, we'll leave tomorrow to get away from them. <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> yeah, we'll leave tomorrow regardless, though, because um, we've got reasonable weather. Or we think we have. Well, we've got some reasonable weather. It's just such a... So we've got all our charts and things out. We've got our PCs out. We've got our phones out. We've got a new set of dividing rulers that's been given to us by one of our subscribers that we met in Carrick. Thank you very much for that. And um, they're nice they're, they're so nice they're unused they're unscratched and i'm tempted to put them back in their box to keep them that way but they never get used then so we've got all that we've got our pilotage of places that we can go in scotland and we're just wondering where can we get to before the weather turns and belts us sideways um we've been looking at the weather patterns over the last for the next couple of days and i think it's fair to say that in general and this is as far as i'm prepared to go in weather apps in general, for the next couple of days, the weather is unpredictable, windy, gusty, and generally from the westish, northwestish. And then later in the week, it will be milder, hopefully more predictable, and directions are, at this stage are just guesswork. That is about as far as I'm prepared to go. Uh, I think in terms of weather apps, we don't use XC because, for me at least, I think they just make the numbers up. I'm sure they don't, but that's how I feel about them. Uh, so that leaves us with windy and predict wind. And of the two, I find windy the less distressing to look at. Even though they use the same weather models, the colours on predict wind scare the pants off me. I mean, like a Force 4 is bright red. I dread to think what a Force 5 is like. It's probably black with yellow purple bits or something. Yeah, we just think that the slightly more pastel <laughs> colours are slightly more soothing. <laughs> I know that's nothing to, be, to base a weather app on, but there you have it. If I could change the colours and predict wind, I'd do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> so what's the plan? What have we come up with? Uh, well, our basic plan is to leave here for a stupid o'clock in the morning and to proceed up the channel. But um, With the tide. With the tide. Going with the tide. 
and then at some point make a decision whether we're going to go to Campbelltown or continue on to Gear. The advantage of Campbelltown is that we would be more sheltered, um, whereas Gear gets us to where we want to go. But there's a lot less shelter in Gear. But there's a lot less shelter. So um, we'll make that decision, I reckon, just about after maybe one, two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and just see how we feel at that time. But we'll also, we'll have done about like five hours of sailing by then. So. Yeah, so I mean, if it's um, a reasonable sail, we can keep going. If it's a really lumpy sea state close in, then it's going to be worse crossing to Scotland. Yeah. And if it's really, really lumpy close in, we might be in Glenarm. Well, that's true, but um, that's our plans at the moment. Yeah, so it's very unpredictable because the weather's very unpredictable. And the sea state's very unpredictable. One of the downsides of being here in the Secret Anchorage is you've got no idea what it's doing outside. No, you don't. Um, but that's why you have to rely on weather apps and stuff like that. Because you're so sheltered here that you just no idea what's out there. Can we do away with that phrase? What? Rely on weather apps. Okay, okay, okay. We can't rely. <laughs> <laughs> we can't do a point. We can't do a point. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell that Beverly's not that keen. But there you go. Ah, oh dear. When I used to fly, I nearly crashed because of weather apps. At least if it goes wrong in sea, I can heave to and put it right. So that's an advantage. Um, well, actually, it wasn't really weather apps because there weren't any. No, I know. But anyway. yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write down all the essential information for tomorrow. We're not going to bother putting the forecasts in because they'll change them. They always <laughs> do. There's another two forecasts to come before we leave. And I guarantee you they'll be different because they always are. But things like the tidal state, nice predictable tides. I like tides. Um, and also what the tidal flows are. Yes. They're nice and predictable. And we'll also put in some estimated positions to where we think we want to be by a certain time. Like where's our decision point? Yes. You know, and so it's going to be a very outline passage plan. But that's what we're going to do next. Though there might be coffee first, even though I've already had one. Yeah, because I having looked at Predict Wind, I think I need a coffee. Yeah. Okay, so it's half four in the morning. The wind's yeah. howling away outside. What have we decided? We're supposed to be leaving in half an hour. I point out that you're still wearing your dressing gown and you're lying in bed. I know, I know. That's the problem with sailing. The tides are never in the Goldilocks time with the sun up and everything. It's like you have to get that's, up at the crack of dawn. That's not true. It happens quite often. True, but you know, sometimes it's not. But oh, I'm just lying here and the latitude is strong. It's cold, it's windy and we're not in any great urgency to move and we don't really feel the need. No. If we went today, I would have to go to Campbelltown because the winds on the Mull are quite strong. Whereas tomorrow, the winds on the Mull, on the outside of the Mull, are a little bit weaker. Um, and still frisky enough to go sailing, though, according to the uh, app. But oh no, latitude is strong, I'm afraid. I don't want to go to bed. Well, we've just had the anchor drag alarm go off and we don't exactly look like we're springing to the bow to haul the anchor and start the engine. <laughs> so what's going on? Um, when we dropped the anchor, uh, we put a 50 metre range on. But what you've got to bear in mind that the anchor can go both ways. So... If you haven't got it quite right on where you drop the anchor, you can easily be just a, slit, a little bit more than 50 metres away. But we've got um, the shore behind us. Uh, we've still got four metres of um, depth under the keel. Um, and um, it, it was just a big gust. And I think um, the wind is already dying. And I think we'll be fine. You don't look like you're panicking. No, I'm not really. Um, the good thing about the anchor alarm is 
it gives you, it, it tells you, obviously, that there is a problem, but you have there then still got time to assess whether you need to do anything about it. It's the difference, isn't it, between a mooring ball and an anchor, or a mooring ball and an anchor? Yeah, with the mooring ball... If it goes, you're gone. That's true. But with the anchor, if you drag a little bit, you're not necessarily everything's gone because the boat the anchor can reset mm. it's also worth pointing out this is the second time we've had an anchor alarm in three days yeah well and we didn't exactly we didn't do anything for the first one no we didn't we didn't do anything for this one either <laughs> what are we doing Beth? Uh, well we're having a a little celebration I guess we're hoping to get off tomorrow and go and so if if we do get off tomorrow if the weather's suitable then this is our last night in the secret anchorage for a while so we thought we'd come onto the beach we've found a ton of driftwood here on the beach and we're having a little campfire just because we can what are we actually also celebrating Bev? oh our 3,000 subscriber we certainly are. Yes, um, thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Um, you've got us up to just over 3,000 and we hope to keep growing that number. Um, because at the end of the day, our channel lets us get in contact with other sailors and go to other places and meet people and talk about things and see things that otherwise I think we would miss. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed yet, there's the little red button just down there in the corner. You can just give it a squeeze. And um, the YouTube does say to press the bell button beside it if you haven't already done so, and you get quicker notifications. So there you go. That is the shameless sales plug for tonight complete. So now that we're here at the campfire, Beverly, what we're going to do? Well, we didn't bring any food. We didn't even bring any blankets to sit on, so our, our, our bums are going chalky white from all this, this limestone and chalk that's about here. Um, campfire songs? Actually, can we sing on YouTube? I don't know. For sure. Sorry, YouTube has banned our campfire songs. <laughs> so we'll just have to do them without the sound. <laughs>